Today is your day. There is no tomorrow. There is only 42.2 kilometers of road ahead of you. It will test your body. It'll test your mind. But most of all, it will test your spirit. Will you have the spirit to fight? Rise to that challenge. Because the harder the struggle, the greater the reward. Today is your day. There is no tomorrow! I remember Tokyo Marathon 2018. Um, what a wonderful experience that was. There was 35,000 people in a wave of humanity and energy. And their slogan at the time was, uh, the day we unite, and you really felt like you were part of something. I remember getting to 36, 37K, and my mind telling me, you have to walk. And I went through this period where I was able to distract myself though and, and stay focused. And I remember getting to 38K and then really distracting myself well and 39k coming around really fast. And then I thought, well, I'll see my wife at 40k and I'll be home. And I just remember that overwhelming sense of achievement, joy, and absolute relief at finishing that day. And my memories of the day is, it was just a, a great day. So yeah, I hadn't looked at the medal. It was only when you mentioned it, I found the medal and I thought, oh, this is a really cool medal. I didn't even remember what it looked like. And it just gave me a chance to relive, you know, what started the whole running long distance yeah. process for me. Which first ever marathon, I went into it completely naive, not really a runner. And uh, yeah, it hurt, it hurt. My mum was about the halfway mark. Just before we, I started, my wife told me she was pregnant with my son, Ollie, who's now nearly 13. So there was all these emotions going on. I just thought I'd sounded great, all the stories about this massive marathon through the city of London. So uh, yeah, I entered, was lucky enough to get a spot, uh, had to raise the money. And I'd heard three hours was a good time, so that was naively what I went for. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it hurt, it hurt. Hi, I'm Valentina. Um, I'm from Caracas, uh, Venezuela. Um, well, I remember I have not, uh, I have a privileged uh, sort of upbringing until some point where my mom and dad uh, got uh, divorced. 
that was a little bit of pressure. Um, he was a really um, pushy person, but in a good way, uh, just trying to get the best out of all of us. Um, and then um, uh, I actually, he was a marathon runner. Um, he was, uh, I remember him picking, picking me up from high school uh, and taking me to the track. He would do his training and he said, well, you just have to run. So I think the passion for running started from there. What I love about the marathon, oh, so many things. Um, it's actually, I mean, I, I have to say that I've started to love running before loving the marathon. Because I had a friend that introduced me to running. She was uh, really kind and um, she took me, the first run that she took me out was an 18K run. And it changed something on, my, on the mindset. Um, and then she, one day she said, we were doing the 10K in the Gold Coast Marathon and like, I don't know, six weeks before, oh, let's gonna do the marathon. And I'm just like, you crazy, why? And she's like, oh, just because we can. And like, Marathon serves for me uh, to be a celebration of a struggle. Uh, I know I'm gonna suffer in the marathon. I know that I'm gonna go through hard times. And for me, it's just uh, that teaching moments where um, I, uh, go to hard times and push myself to uh, get what I need to get. You have so much time in your training uh, and in the race per se, because it's not about the race, it's about also about the process that you go through. Uh, it's just those uh, amount of time that you spend uh, going out to train, uh, to run and to do uh, different kind of things to try to get to your starting line. Um, it's the process that I love the most as well. Um, not only the race, the race is the epitome. And sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. Um, most of the times you lose. Uh, so Leah's, uh, Leah's two and a half now. Um, just weighing just under 20 kilos, and um, yeah, he's going well. He's in kindy a few days a week, and he's uh, yeah, he's active, very active actually. So I'm um, just, just trying to work out where he gets that actually from. Yeah, definitely my mindset for sure is different, and uh, things that matter don't matter anymore, which I'm sure is the transition between um, becoming a, an adult, I guess you could say, or being a parent. Um, for me, I definitely look at things now in a way that uh, I never have, which is uh, definitely healthy for my mindset and my overall well-being. So, uh, where did the pram running come from? Where did that start? Yeah, so it was, to be honest, it was a bit of a way for me to spend more time with Leo and also to try and install some good healthy habits, to be honest. So, um, Leo loves it. He, uh, he's definitely got uh, a little system where we try to make sure that we will give him certain foods at certain times and give him some music and stuff. But he's happy. He chats away and looks at everything. And, uh, yeah. He's got his own marathon nutrition plan. Basically, he will run uh, you know, every form of apple juice for his hydration. He'll run raisins, all these kind of things. Make sure my playlist is really important. So wiggles, just songs that he really likes. I just put them on and he can hear them. So you might think that running with a pram is just running with a pram, but there's food preparation, there's music preparation. There's all these little things that you need to take into account to make sure that he's happy. Because if he's happy, then we can run a little bit longer, right? So, uh, you know, that's where the marathon thought came from. So uh, so his, his, his part of the marathon plan is almost more important than you as a runner. Basically, I'm just managing him, right? I'm just managing his outburst until he cracks it and he wants to get out and go jogging, right? Or do whatever he wants to do. So it's pretty much like a ticking time bomb, to be honest. This is a, a full plan, right? So if you look on the fridge, we've, we've been going since day one. So basically, I've made sure that he can handle it for X amount of time. We've just built it up over a few weeks. So the, the things that I would make sure is that, you know, I pack him full of good foods, uh, you know, the night before big runs. Make sure that I actually fast him. Now, fasting him from the pram, all right? Not a food fast, but making sure that he doesn't have any pram action for a few days. So when he gets into the pram, he wants to get in the pram and stay in the pram, right? So people go, oh, that's amazing. You can sit in the pram for an hour or two, but little do they know that I've actually just not given him any pram action for the week. So he's just pram taper. Pretty much a pram taper or a fast. It depends how you want to label it these days. But I definitely like the thought of making sure that like going into a chocolate shop, you want to make sure that, you know, 
you're looking forward to getting in there. Same thing with him, right? So I wanted to make sure that he was looking forward to getting in the pram, right? What, uh, what are you hoping Leo's going to get out of this for his future? Oh, I just, I, I personally want to instill good habits. That's all I want to do, right? So whether that be that he sees us do something active each day and he carries it on with his life, whether he puts it into any other sport or any other genre, for example. But I just want to make sure that what he sees is normal uh, and that he is going to lead his own pathway of making sure that he does look after himself you know, physically and hopefully that will uh, you know, shed him in good light for you know, a healthy, happy life. Pretty sure he's going to go out too fast for sure and I think the back end will be ugly. But uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, we could get a flat tyre, who knows, right? Could get a flat tyre, could, could be windy, could be hot, you know. I might kick the bucket, who knows what could happen, right? Dawn breaks, the moment is finally here. The journey to reach the starting line is now over. Runners mingle together, strangers become instant allies, friends become competitors. There are the dreamers, the brave, the fearless. The marathon is running's greatest narrative, and each runner will contribute their own unique and special verse. Well, I first started thinking about doing a marathon, watching the footage from last year's marathon. Sitting at my mum and dad's place with everyone around me, I saw people of all shapes, sizes, ages, walks of life, and I said, I want to do it. Everyone around me laughed at me because I'm not a runner. I've never run anything in my life, but that was my idea. I wanted to do the marathon a year later. My first training session was 23 minutes long with three minutes of running. And in my head I was thinking, how on earth is this going to get me to be able to run 42 Ks? I didn't trust what my program was, but I stuck with it. I stuck with exactly what the training was. Not all the time. Life got in the way. I couldn't do all my training sessions. And I started thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this. This is a dream that's never going to happen. Um, yeah, just kept getting encouragement and, and support from everyone around me, stuck with it. My training sessions progressively got a little bit longer, the walking got less, the running got longer. That was the thing with running, you can do it anywhere, no matter where you are. Um, through Christmas, I remember Christmas running Boxing Day morning thinking, what am I doing? This, this has never been my life, I've never had to run on over the festive season or things like that. So. Um, yeah, and uh, slowly but surely got there. I don't know why I wanted to do it. <laughs> That's good, I'm recording Just to that. say that I did it. Yeah. I just, yeah. I wanted to do something that I'd never done before, that not many people do. I wanted to prove to myself to begin with. I wanted to I wanted to prove to my kids, if you put your mind to something, if you train hard, if you are disciplined and you know have the support system around you. My support system was amazing. If you've got all that, you're capable of anything. So eventually the moment of the marathon arrives. The planning has come to an end. The mind must settle. For those last five to 10 seconds, every runner turns inwardly, quietly, before the big dance begins. The first few kilometers of a marathon always seem too easy. The pace is good, the running comfortable. The faces of the crowd light the way. 
each runner chats happily to those around them as the sheer exhilaration of the marathon begins to fill their lungs. These first few kilometres are crucial. Those who lose their head and go too strong or simply forget their nutrition will pay for it in the later stages. But those who keep their head, those who stick to the plan, begin to lay the foundations for their own day of greatness. Because after all, the marathon is a fickle friend. If you show it no respect early, it will give you no respect in the later stages, just when you need it most. Four, three, two, one, go! Uh, the marathon for me is I think it's the World Cup for the running, you know? I think uh, that vibe, I think that's a, a, is a challenge, personal challenge for everyone. Heaps of people have a goal, others just want to finish. I think the marathon is the, is the big thing. I think it's the biggest race for every single runner. There's two things I really like. Uh, one, like uh, I pace one year 320, and then the next year I see that person way ahead of me. That's also like that's like yes, like they they got it, they got that bug. And especially like I think the last time I paced it was I got a few little things which is so special. I had like a group probably ended up a group of six, and at the 30Ks, I just say go, and they just left me. And that, that's the thing, like when you come to, like you're in the bottle of everything, like you were struggling, and there's 3Ks you go, most of the time that's where everyone starts slowing down. Yeah. And you say, come on, it's still time to shine, and they literally shine, that's, that was awesome. And then I came to the finish line a minute after then, yeah. and there was just hugs and tears. and. So what's the hardest part of being a pacer? What's the most difficult? Uh, when you pace, I think when you pace your friends, and you see they're dropping, and you know how much they want of them, I think that's the hardest part. Like, so what's it like in those in the recovery zone when you see those people who've either been with you or gone ahead of you, or maybe even fallen off the back? What what are those minutes like in the? I I think I had one in special. I, I had that person who hugged me and said, oh, if it wasn't you, I would never make that. I think today is the best day of my life. It's like, wow, job done. Yeah, it's like it. when you find someone you can give that to a person, you feel like my job is done. It's pretty cool. That was, a, that was my moment as a pacer, I think. Now comes the time for settling in. You need to reach the halfway mark of every marathon without feeling like you've taken a step. Experienced runners know this, but the first time I must find this out by sticking to their plan. The first half of a marathon is an enjoyable time. The crowds, the happiness, the patter of feet, and the awareness of the world around you. But soon, given time, this will all dissipate. Whatever needs to be done, do it now, for soon it will be too late. <laughs> hey, how are you going? Not bad. Bigger question is though. I'm feeling good. 
good. Oh, yeah? Steady pace. Good. Walking through the aid stations. Walking every aid station. Yeah. Trying to get two cups of fluid. And pace is good. Yep, nice and steady. Head's good, mind's good. Feeling good. How was Burley turn? It was good. Yeah? Big crowd? Big crowd, yeah. yeah. That's always. Any family, friends down there? Lots of friends. Always a good part. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's a little bit humid, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. Keep the nutrition up. Yep. Moving through the halfway point, this is a time for the marathon runner to take stock. Check the body check the legs, but most importantly, check the mind. Wow. Okay. Done. Almost nice in case. Yeah. Everything went planned. Yeah. Some good people around here. Yeah. Good people around, yeah. Having a good time. The weather's beautiful. What a day. What's it all about now at this stage? 19k. 435k. 19k. What's the, biggest rolling. What's the biggest challenge now for him? I think, yeah, everything starts running after 30. See how we go. See how many people we can carry after 30. It'll be nice finishing a big group. Yeah, let's get done. You love it, don't you? Yeah, I love it. Big times. How many times have you done this one now? Uh, third time now. Third. Third time facing 315. Yeah. Any familiar faces? Uh, not really. Not yet. They're probably ahead today. All in front. They're always ahead. See you again, buddy. See you again, man. At this stage of the marathon, the decisions made in those early kilometres are beginning to bear fruit. The battle for the marathon is about to start. So, um, yeah, the idea for the marathon came from um, it being the 40th, like a bit of a significant uh, marathon for the Gold Coast. Um, I thought, well, yeah, that'd be the one to do, you know, something pretty special. What's some of the things that people have told you, like, in terms of advice? Have you got much advice or got much throwaway comments from people when you say, I'm doing my first marathon, like, what are the, what's their reaction? <laughs> Most of them were like, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, you know, you're running lots, and so they really downplayed it a lot and didn't seem to be too concerned about it at all, and I was, oh, in my head, I'm like, oh, freaking out, this is a long run, and... So, big aim is to sit with the pace group, um, just to get the momentum and get a bit of a, a feeling of just running with the pack and you yeah, had to take my mind off on where I'm at myself. The they wall, must, must yeah, the Sundar Bridge and the wall is so, everyone and adzi has been talking up the wall for forever and a day. So and what, what do you think's gonna, what do you think's gonna happen when, because for a first time you have no concept really do you? No. Of what it is but yeah. what do you think's gonna happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, it's gonna, I don't know what's gonna happen, I'm either gonna not hit the wall or I'm going to hit the wall probably hard. It's going to be yeah, one of those things. Are so, you prepared to walk? Uh, definitely, yeah. Uh, look, you know, I'm going to finish it. Um, whatever, you know, even if I'm dropping back to 6.30, 7 minute paces, whatever, like shuffle. I'll do the Cliffy Young if I have to. I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll jog really slow. I'm not worried about it. But What's the emotion? What's the one thing that kind of sums up? Um, oh, there's massive amount of anxiety of you know I guess you just I just wish it was tomorrow in a way like you know let's just get this thing over and done with and um, I've prepped enough I've ran enough I've cycled enough I think I've done enough Yeah, good, isn't it? We're doing it, though, Tom.
faces of the crowds blur into nothingness. The breath begins to deepen. The starter's gun seems like a lifetime ago. For the next five kilometres, the marathoner must turn inwards. They will need more courage than at any other point in the race. Breaking the wall is based almost entirely on the strength of each marathoner's mind. This courage, this strength of mind will decide everything. This courage will decide whether I win, whether I smash my PB, whether I finish, or whether I succumb to the torture of the wall. Okay, hey, Rob, I stop. Yeah. Gotta keep going. Keep pushing it. Run this bridge along a lot, so. I'm gonna keep pushing. We're familiar right. to answer now, mate. You'll be right. I'm hurting. It's tough. You've had a 30k warm up, mate. It's time to, uh, to dig deep. Now you've got in it, you've done the work. Come on, Hill. You're right. I got it. We got this. We're all support coming up. <laughs> Family. Family. All the crew will be at the uh, so start of finish line. So pumped. For many runners though, there are moments when the wall now seems too great, too powerful and too strong. The mind begins to doubt perhaps for the first time and the marathon starts to take its first victims. You're going under 315, everyone looks pretty good here. So, yeah, fun. What have they got to focus on now? I just think the pace, don't get you excited, it's still 10 minutes to go. And the bed done. The bed finished. Yeah. You keep them entertained? Ah, uh, we are pretty serious, I think it's the last 10 k's. Just get concentrated and get the job done, I think. Yeah. How are you feeling? You got the biggest job. Uh, they help as well, it's all about them today. Even when you're helping, it's more like keep send the energy to those people and get the job done together. Well, let's stick them with you, mate. Yeah. See you yeah. again soon. See ya. But then something deep inside says run. Just start running again. I'm not done yet. I'm not beaten. I'm still in this fight. I'm going to fight for this moment. I'm going to fight for this marathon. And it's in these moments that a marathon is born. To witness a marathon is to witness the glory of humanity. For all those who have stood and cheered each and every runner, not purely their own, but everyone. Those who adorn the footpaths, the bridges, the walkways, the finishing chutes, those treacherous hill climbs and those turns. Those on the sidelines are part of this marathon too. The waiting can be weary, the anxiety crippling, the wondering stressful, but then the exhilaration is overwhelming. For when you spot your runner, when you see your runner, you give them whatever they can to get them over the line. For when each runner meets their supporter, the marathoner becomes rejuvenated. Thank you.
The marathon is the most public of stages, but every marathoner's reasons are private. There is a quietness now etched in the air, a stillness. Each runner casts a solitary figure. No longer do they seem to move together swiftly in packs. Now their gaze is on the few metres of bitumen in front of them. And now the marathon becomes a sheer battle of reason, that private reason. Each marathoner keeps their own reason, their own reason for being out here at the forefront of their mind, hoping, hoping that that reason will drive them forward step by step, kilometre by kilometre towards that finish. Come on, Grant, mate. This is your day. Today's the day. Finish it strong. You look strong, finish it strong. Woo yeah, baby! Eight station to eight station now, mate. So my marathons are made, mate. <laughs> right now. For the experienced marathoner, the later stages are a chance to reflect, a chance to look back on what might have been, a chance to think forward. So, what happened, Val? Someone collapsed in front of me. Yeah. I have to give it first aid until the ambulance came. You have to do first aid. Yes. Far out. Yes, alright. Was he alright in the end? Um, he was a little more conscious when the ambulance got there, but he was up all. Wow. It's a lot of people I think have overheated. Yeah. Due to the humidity. Yeah. So. I have seen so many people on the floor. Yeah, there's well, medics. But he collapsed in front of me, so. There's medics out everywhere. I know. It's incredible. I felt stronger this marathon, and I am, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Normally by this time I'm walking, and even with the humidity, I'm talking to you. Yeah. So. And I'm moving forward. That's the most important thing. Not far to go, hey? No. Then there are those who have ventured into territory previously uncharted, territory previously foreign and daunting. How the last few K's been? Really hard. Are they? Knees are killing me. I think I've lost a toe now. <laughs> Just the one? Um, I don't know. <laughs> They're all a bit numb. Knees and hips are really hurting. But my mind seems to be okay. Yep. Going through waves. But I'm okay. What's the plan from now for the next couple of K? Run as much as I can. Yep. Yep. Enjoy the last, the last bit. Has it been everything you thought it would be? When they said you hit the wall or it's tough, has that been as... Oh, definitely. Definitely. But it's everything and more. The crowds are amazing. Everyone else doing it. Incredible. The goal now is a simple one. Simply keep moving. Keep moving forward as quickly or as slowly as you can and head for home with everything you have. Dig deep.
goosebumps. Yeah. You enjoyed it, buddy? Yeah. Making memories, mate. This is about three hours far, I reckon. Yeah. Father and son. Yeah. Three minutes to get around the track, take the glory. Just enjoy the last lap, mate. Yeah. Enjoy it. 300, mate. 300 to go. You go to the finish now, okay? okay right. I'm gonna go and find Cherie. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Another one done. Yeah, another one. Another one done. And first aid on the course. Yes. That's gotta be a new marathon. Yes. <laughs> That's never been done. No. You're looking good, Val. Thank Congratulations. You. Yeah, thanks. You know this stretch all too well now. Yep. What a beautiful day. Enjoyed it? Oh, amazing. Oh, it's good to face it. They're all ahead now. 500 years to go. Yeah. Stop. Job done. Let's get in front of you. Yep. What do you love about it? I think it's the people, I think. Every marathon is the same distance, but different people. Everyone has a story. Yeah. Some have amazing battles they've been in through and they're here all sharing the same love. Yeah. I think that's all about the love for running. Yeah. And give it to them. Today was all about giving. I feel super happy. No paces. When did the last guy drop off you? Yeah? Oh this one. Three ahead. They've gone ahead Two of us. Two days to go, I say. Come on guys, your day. Go and get that done. Yeah. So there, probably mess PB for them. All right, mate, I'll let you enjoy it. Cheers. Thank you. See you in the finish. Thanks, yeah.
The memories of a marathon last long in all those who came and tested. In those who supported and in those who conquered. Share a moment with a marathoner and watch that look in their eyes. Hear that tone in their voice. Feel the emotion as they recall the memories of the day. Marathons are more than simply a foot race. They are a turning point in all of our lives. Marathons make us kinder people. They make us gentler people, more compassionate, more caring and more determined. They make us better runners, but more importantly, they make us better people. For some, they may never return again to the roads of a marathon, content in their achievement. For others, though, the taste is addictive. They will return again and again, forever seeking to conquer marks as yet inconceivable. Nevertheless, for each finisher, once a marathoner, they will always be a marathoner. Big party. 